I'm pleased to have them at this table for the first time. And some people on my staff are more than thrilled that they are here uh, because they're from Georgia, by the way. What is it going on down in Georgia with you and, and, and so many good musicians coming out of there? You know, there's something in the water down there? I think it's the earth. It is. It's yeah. the soil. <laughs> it's the soil, yeah. yeah. Tell me your story. I mean, how you guys started together and, and, and how you have, in a sense, just continued with a loyal fan base uh, in addition to the Grammy Awards and all that other stuff. Well, we, um, Emily moved down from Connecticut when she was like nine and we met in elementary school. In and, Decatur. Yeah, in Decatur, in Decatur, Georgia. We right. met in elementary school and sort of stayed kind of not just acquaintances for a while and then we got into high school and got into the choir together and started to become friends and just started singing together and jamming. Yeah. And um, that, that from that point on, it was, you know, we went to separate colleges for a little while. She went to Tulane and I went to Vanderbilt and then we both transferred back to Emory and um, in Atlanta and just, you know, we just played. We played at bars. We played everywhere, wherever we could get a gig. Yeah. Started writing our own When songs. did you know this was something you could do um, for a long time? The first that, time you could I make picked a life up a guitar. Absolutely. I mean, I came from a musical family and Amy as well, and I started writing songs when I was about nine. And as soon as I held a guitar, I started writing stories about young women out on the streets who were trying to make a living playing guitar, and it was just kind of my path, you know. Yeah. Even though I studied to be an English teacher, at the same time, Amy and I were building a local following and a career, and so I just made the decision to go with music, And but it's the most natural thing in the world. Yeah. Is that, you know, we all know the story of Dave Matthews and, and how awesome. that band yeah. is awesome, though, to how they, you know, they got to start something by letting people tape them as the Grateful Dead did and, and develop a strong... Uh, fan base. Did you guys do some of the same thing? Because you have not had the benefit of great radio play. You're right, we haven't. And we've always been open to taping. You know, it's kind of our policy. Whoever wants to come and tape the shows and mm -hmm. share it with fans, not to sell it, but just to, yeah, right. to share it. I mean, we, we are a hootenanny band. We're a grassroots band. You talk about coming from the Georgia music community. It used to be we played Little Five Points Pub in Atlanta. We were like the house band. Our friends in the audience were musical. You know, one played flute, one was in a punk band, a whole motley crew. They used to come up and join us on stage, and we'd let people sing their own songs, and th that's that's where we come from. So, sharing music and the whole idea of um, sharing the experience, whether you're a fan or whether you're a musician, um, that's sort of our philosophy. So, tape as many shows as you want. You know, we yeah. feel like it's a good thing. Where did the name come from? We were opening for a band in Atlanta. We got this gig, and we used to be called Sailors and Ray, and we just were like, we need to think of a band name. So we got the dictionary out and scanned it and saw the word indigo and we're like that sounds cool yeah you know i mean we were like what like 20 years old or something you no, know it's not the indigo girls it's indigo girls you no know, i don't know there's always it an doesn't argument matter. about it <laughs> <laughs> i have no idea what it's supposed to be now, the notion the fact that you're both lesbians uh but not together so to speak in, in a romantic way do people care about that do they know about it is it part of the appeal is it does it have any impact at all on on your life and your music yeah it does. I mean, it's the impact has changed through time, how it impacts us. But, um, you know, in a way, I think, that, you know, the queer community has been so supportive of us that, you know, for that, we, we get a lot of support from the queer community, and we appreciate that. Um, it, it has held us back in many, many ways, you know, but I think it's held us back just on radio, you know, and in the media. And But I think sexism I mean, is... They wouldn't come and, and write about your... The way albums, they write or? about us, you know, as oh, much so as anything else, more, you know, it's, it's more, it's more the personality and the lifestyle than it is the music. Is that sometimes, it? or it's our audience, or it's just derogatory yeah. remarks, or we can't get a break, sort of. But I think, you know, I think it's sexism as much as homophobia, honestly, right. because we're two women that are, that have images that are not as glamorous. You know, like I'm more masculine, maybe, and it's not the kind of woman that you necessarily want to write about or or that is necessarily easy to image and so i think in that way it's been hard but i think our political outspokenness has been the biggest the on, biggest on hurdle for, issues? On, on anything you yeah, know right. it's like we're always you know i think we're doing a <laughs> lot of activism whether it's the environment or iraq or whether it's gay rights gay or rights. pro choice or it's, it's anti death the, penalty yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah, I think it's the fact that we are outspoken. I think it's you know p women who are outspoken and sort of earnest for for rock critics. That's a that's a hard one. <laughs> you know yeah. they can't get their head around it. They can they can understand Rage Against the Machine, but they don't understand the Indigo Girls. You both write songs, you know, it's a lot, and, and frequently when you have the combination that you have, someone someone does the music, someone does the lyrics. Or frequently someone plays and, and the other is the vocalist and creates the music. You two both write songs and both, both songs end up on mm -hmm. the album. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, there's more to this, and help me understand what it is. <laughs> well, there's a lot of reasons for it. Our sensibilities. <laughs> I realized I was explaining. Yeah. I wasn't explaining very well, was I? I mean, our our one of our, I think our greatest strength is our differences. Absolutely, we're a yin yang experience, and it's a yin yang experience. Yin yang <laughs> experience, no doubt. Amy writes her songs. She comes from her perspective, her sensibilities, her influences, and the same thing for me. And we also need that private, creative, artistic space. I mean, writing a song is a very vulnerable thing. You know, nine times That's out of ten. Because what you're trying to find the rawness of your own experience. Exactly, you're putting out these lines that you know most of them are terrible at the beginning, or you know you're just working it, you're honing it. And for me, you know, a lot of times, unless you're doing a co-write, which I've done some of, but that's a completely different thing. Where you just need that that your own alone time and your vulnerability of of the creative experience. But what Amy and I do together is arrange the songs. So once the songs are written and we know we have a project coming up, like a new CD, right. we get together at her house or my house. We start talking about the harmony lines. Our voices are in different parts of the musical spectrum, so that works out well. We talk about what instruments we want to play, how we're going to make it different, You know, not try to fall back on the same arrangement tricks. And then at that point, after arranging the song, that's when it really becomes an Indigo Girls song. And I've always felt like what Amy adds to my songs makes my songs better than they are on their own. So that's what we you do. You feel likewise or not? Yeah. No, no not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's a, you know, that's why we're together still. I mean, that's why it's been 20-something 20, 20 years. Why? You know? Because the, the, the sum is greater the, the, than, the, the, than, the, than the parts, you know. Yeah. Now, are you together by this? I mean, do you hang out together, or is this simply you come together musically, and then you both have your own distinct, separate lives and, yeah. and don't see each other off stage? Well, we see each other. I mean, I, I you know. live, yeah. I mean, I live like an hour from Atlanta in the country, and she lives in the city. So you know, we live in different. We live well, are different you a country lives. girl? And she's a city girl, or is it just? I, I, Emily's a little bit of a country girl too. I, I think. Country, <laughs> yeah, love the country yeah. as well. But I see Wait. enough city on the road. I don't. I don't want to see it when I get home. You know. So you live on a farm. I live in the woods, actually. Do you really? Yeah. Now, what does that mean? I live in the woods. I live in the woods. I hey, live I mean, on a river in the woods. Yeah. You know, in a house, and it's beautiful land and animals all around and stuff so yeah and how many months of the year are you on the road uh well when a record comes out we'll tour for a year and a year and a half we do it like in three weeks three and a half week legs and then we come home for a week and so we do get breaks mm. but the touring schedule is about a year and a half sometimes we go to europe been to western europe we've been to australia and sometimes we do that but mostly we focus on the u.s in your dreams uh what where would you want this to go that it hasn't been For me, the the biggest thing, you know, well, I mean, it's been we've gotten so much, but like just on a in a business way, um, it would be really nice if something that we do that's more rock could actually get on rock radio. And it's so hard for a woman to get on rock radio these days. And that would be that in my dream. That's that's an area that we've never been able to bust into. And I would I would love for that to be recognized because we do a lot of rock stuff, you know, and it's part of what we do. But um. As far as just on a spiritual level or emotionally speaking, you know, it is, it's, it's fed me, you know. It's and a great ride. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, there's not, I couldn't ask for any more. In fact, I, it's, an, it's enough, you know what I mean? It's enough. Yeah. It's like, I just want to play music, you know, and I, that's what I'm getting to do. And I could do that at any level. So I Who, feel good about it. And who's influenced you the most? Um, musically. Because we have, we have so many different influences, but um, for me, the most over time, over the large expanse of time has probably been Neil Young. The really? most, yeah. Now why? Just as, as a longevity thing, you know, I've been influenced at different points by Patti Smith or The Clash or James Taylor, you know, or all these underground bands, but as far as on the long term, I have stuck with him since first grade, you know, and... Isn't he doing a new tour that just started in London or something? Yeah, I don't know. He's always touring, it yeah. seems like. Yeah. Uh, and you, same influences or Earl, No, well, I love Neil Young. Right. He's right up there. But early on, I'd say Joni Mitchell, as far as directly inspirational as a, as a song craftsperson. Right. And then as far as emotionally, spiritually, music and all the elements, I'd have to say Stevie Wonder is probably the one that most um, speaks to my heart. Because of the lyrics? It's just, just the, his lyrics and his supreme musicianship, um, the way his records are all different, the songs that last for years and years and years. And, you know, I like black American music, and he's like the king of it to me in a way. He just brings all the elements together. The following groups are represented on the packaging for your album. What do these groups mean to you? How do they get involved? Listen, MoveOn.org, National Gay and Lesbian Task Force, Rock the Vote, MTV. I think, uh, uh, independent, I'm not sure who Rock the Vote is. That may be not. I, I think MTV has started that. It's yeah. like a, yeah. Independent Maybe. Media Center, Amnesty International, Global Exchange, Honor the Earth, Women's Action for New Directions, Sweatshop Watch, 
National Abortion Rights Action League.